Hey, yo, where Nick at? Back there in the cut. One thing I want to do, I want to take care of my mom, my dad, my sister, and just everybody else. He's saying, if you want this, you got to keep working. That's one thing he just always telling me, keep working, don't stop. So, like they told me, LeBron spends like $2 million on his body. You got to take care of your body. You got to eat right. And for me, at first, you know, I ain't like getting the cold tough. It was just real cold. But I knew that I'm going to have to do that if I make it to the league. And I start, it's getting easy now. So, I, I'm, I have no problem getting in the cold tough. So, that's one of the harder things for me. You got to have to, you got to take care of your body. That's the one thing. That's the most, that's probably one of the most important things about being about being a player, you gotta take care of your body and eat right. Well, Excel, I just started that with uh, Lester Hudson. He had Toy Wayne started coming there. So by Shabazz, I need to bring on him. He's, uh, I've always loved him. You know, he, I've been training, he was my first, I was his first client, one of his first clients, and and I knew it was hard for me to uh, leave him. But at the same time, Lester had told me about Drew. Drew's a great person. He used to be the greatest trainer. And for me to come over there and Lester to, you know, help me and for me to, for him to bring me over there. That's, I just thank him for everything. I know I should have bought some extra shorts.
He was just a real hater. Man. Where y'all play at? The uh, Mavs Center. You get you get late. Can't play? I don't play the same. I can't play to the uh, end of August. I just take it off. Get, uh... <laughs> I think I'm trying to replace. Dude, I'm running right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we probably got it. I'll offer you that. We probably got it, though. I'm trying to think. I'm not what? I'm not, I can't. I forgot Excel. They just got everything, you know. Our old Grizzly trainer. He helps. He's getting me ready for NBA workouts, and, and they got everything. They got recovery, anything I need, massage, cold tub, hot tub, steam room. They got all that. So that's just something I take advantage of, and I can't just let that sit there and for me not to use it. So I get my body is always in shape. I can do late today, right? Do late today, right? Yeah. Okay. Alright, let's go. Got the down, back to the back. He's always been like that, though. No, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I made a decision my fifth grade year, coming to my sixth grade year. I just I just knew basketball was a sport for me, honestly, because I was doing really great. Even though I was good at football, I just I knew I had to pick one sport and basketball sport that I just decided to stick to. Well, middle school year, I knew that I had uh, I keep on continuing working hard, you know, working out with Vontae. I worked out with one of my strength coach, Coach Shabazz. So I knew by then, I knew that during middle school time, that that's the year I need to start working on, working out every day, getting better, and not wait until my high school career to start working out. So during my, I, I'm always a hard worker. You guys, uh, Vontae, I want to work out, and I want to get better every day. Well, I didn't have to force it. I didn't have to force it on him. Uh, he always wanted to work out and get better, and that was his thing. Is that he didn't want to. He, he just he wanted to be elite. He didn't want to just be good. He wanted to be a great player and elite player. So um, he always wanted to work out. I mean, I didn't have to force it. Force it on him. I mean, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> there were some times where he probably didn't feel like getting up or, or Dad, I'm tired. I mean, that's no one's perfect, but. At the same time, uh, he always had that work ethic, whereas he, he wanted to wanted to work out. I mean, if it was five in the morning, late at night, putting up shots, uh, getting with the shrink coach, it doesn't matter. I mean, he always he always went the extra mile to, you know, to, to better himself and, and develop. Yeah, that's 
Lester Hudson, ex NBA player, played um, Grizzlies, Wizards, Boston, Cleveland, Clippers. Um, I'm like a big brother of Kennedy Chandler, so we here uh, going through this process, you know, um, working out and just getting this jump shot right. You know, he got everything else. You know, um, just getting footwork and his mechanics on the jump shot. I tell him early, uh, stretching before and after, cold tub, uh, rehab. You know. Um, just the little things like that, you know, I learned on, in my older years in uh, playing career, in my pro career that I should have did when I was young. So I'm telling them at a younger age, foam roll, stretch, use the stretch band, cold tub, hot tub, you know, uh, just everything about your body. You got to take care of your body, you know. Uh, that's the only way you can play, if, you know, you need everything in your body. So uh, the recovery is the key. So that's what I tell them. Let's go! Ah! Come on! Yeah. 
Yes, sir. Come on, Kennedy. Let's go. Lock it in. I'm Javante Holmes, and I'm Kennedy's trainer. I've been knowing Kennedy since he was 10 years old. Well, probably before 10 years old, about 18 years old. We met, I've been knowing him around the city. I knew his dad. Uh, dad used to coach AAU. Um, I was coaching AAU, and I was known around the city as a, one of the uh, trainers in the city. Uh, and I approached Kylan one day, was about uh, training his son, Kennedy. And once we started training, and we've been we've been together ever since. Um, it was delight training, Kenny. He was he's very cerebral. He catches on really fast. Um, so when I first started training, I never thought he'd be this athletic, or you know how big he would be. So the first thing we obviously worked on was uh, him being able to finish around the ring, different finishes. I studied Steve Nash a lot, uh, small unathletic guards at the time. Uh, Look at guys like Kyrie, who's one of the best finishers in the league, but doesn't play above the rim. Um, so I took a look a little out of both of those players and added to the Kennedy package, and he has become one of the, uh, one of the better finishing guards in the, in the country. Uh, when 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 me and Kenny really got to you know training as he got older, uh, middle school uh, basketball, we started amping his workouts up a lot. Uh, we would go from three to four days a week. Uh, entering high school, we started a, a regimen of five a.m. workouts. Uh, he never was against it. He actually wanted to do it um, on the nights before. He would make sure we were doing it. And the, uh, the days of, the night, the mornings of, we made sure we called each other and make sure we was up. So uh, he was very uh, conscious of his schedule. He sacrificed a lot, uh, meaning being a, you know, being a teenager. You know, you probably want to stay up all night, play video games, or be on the phone with your friends. He, he actually, during the week, he had to sacrifice that time to uh, become better and become the player that he is right now. to high school. He had a great mind for the game. Obviously, he needed to get stronger, needed to get faster. He always had a quick first step, quick burst, could read plays. Uh, then he needed, needed to learn how to get his jump shot off. Uh, each year, you saw his development. He was a great finisher his ninth grade year. Became a better uh, mid-range shooter and a, uh, and a guy that can get in the lane and, and make floaters his 10th and 11th grade year. 
this summer, we really worked on his range and his jump shot and extending his range. And um, the summer before going to his senior year, you know, watching him win the EYBL championship, watching how he played on that stage as an underclassman against mostly seniors. And they went out and won it. Uh, the plays that he made, how he communicated with guys, how he got guys in, in right positions, how he helped other guys get easier touches. He, he, he really gets that. Uh, we, we talk about that all the time. A lot of people think, you know, your guard got to go out and score 30, 30 points a game. And me and Kenny always talk about account for 30 points a game. If that's meaning 15 points and 15 assists, uh, just account for 30 points a game. Uh, make plays, make other guys better. And he really gets it and understands how to get other guys involved because he understands late in the game is going to help him out and make it easier for him. He was, he was already a smart basketball player when he was younger. Uh, you know, at, at different levels, you have to learn different things. We never did jump that process. Every level, we talk more and more and more and more and more. And now that he's coming, becoming the player that he is, you can start putting it all together and get him to understand a lot more. And that's him studying. You know, he, he's a bright kid. He's smart. He picks up re really well. He studies. He, he look, his, look at, his, at himself and understand what his weaknesses are. Uh, I think the first part of being the, uh, the player that he is now, or where he want to become, is understanding you and your limitations. He understand that, and he want to work hard and work harder at making himself better. I get a uh, medium vanilla hulk. No. Would you like to add anything to that daily warrior, sir? Die down into your fiber? Nah, that'll be it. Would that be all for you, sir? Yeah, that'll be it. Alright, I have you for a Hope Vanilla 32 ounce and daily warrior 20 ounce. That'll be 1436. You can go around. That'll be fire. Thank you. Thank you. The biggest sacrifice I had to make was playing for MoCAM. My dad told me, this, if you want to be great, be the best player you can be, it's going it's gonna to be the next step you got to take. And that's, just, that's the first, that's one of the biggest sacrifices I made in my high school career. Because I had to practice every weekend, so I was, my mindset was thinking about hanging with my friends and stuff like that. I want to see them, but I, I, uh, I went to uh, practice with them every weekend, and that's why we won Peace Jam. It was a... MoCam, the best organization, I know, no doubt. Any AAU program, that's the best organization because they, they treat you like college, film, scout report, all that. So 
I thank them for letting me play for them for their AAU team. And without them, I don't, I don't think I'll be where I am right now. I know they coming too. We we will find something. Different. All right. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I'm seeing my address. I said you watching the Grizzly game? No, we watching the Grizzly game. Please. We eight. We straight. Pelicans eleven. Trailblazers tenth. Spurs ninth. We probably gotta stay in the. We didn't win this game though. We at least won one game. Jeez. Oh. Yeah, Clark. Brandon Clark in the one game he played against New Orleans only had four points. He has four already. Dash. <gasps> Who's just doing, bro? Who's just doing? Oh, God, my dad said, my dad said, you want the bottle for number? He said, I got a bottle for you. <laughs> and then I said, who? No, I said, no, I said, I ain't paying. He said, all right, all right. I was going to stay. Stay <laughs> messed up. I said, I wasn't going nowhere. I'm like, dang. Yeah, as long as you get buckets without the shot, you can shoot. We don't always be able to. We always be able to say, dang, bro. That's what I'm saying. Keep it low. Keep that up. Hold on, so when you start, when you start speaking down, 13th, I think. Yeah, you see, that's so petty. If I, if I choose virtual, I can't hoop. Oh, God. Yeah. For <laughs> yeah, us, we, we, uh. Wait, for real? Yeah. We oh, go, God. Yeah. Right. We, uh. Good job, Dad. Frank got on so hard. He stayed wearing a dab. Man, I told my dad. I said, I said to my dad, I said, Dad, you mean a, a dab BB, whatever they were called. Yeah. He said. He was like, uh, the next day he called, he saw me, he was like, hey, you know about some shoes, what'd you ask me for? I was like, nah. How much was that? He said, I said, how much was that? I said, then I'm going to go for $400. I said, oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, them just for 100 dollars 500 dollars Chill out. Like, it ain't even, come on. Then the ones he be wearing ain't even out yet. Dang, that's it. Oh, yeah, he be getting custom out of one. He legit. He legit. Hooping them, fool. That's what I'm saying. You can't. Nah, that's what you hooping the retro. Nah, you got to hoop on like CP3s and Melo's. Give me a pair of and what's the Westbrook's? Them just so heavy. Them just so heavy. Yeah. Hey, I do that. I'm asking you something. Ooh, that's a lot. Come on. Bro, Tony Valentino is so sorry, bro. He really, he really, he really not. He really not. He's straight. He really not. He be making me mad. He be helping the team, though. He be making me mad. I ain't need no Grizzly fan. Like, look at it. Like, Jeff Allen for no reason. And one. Hey, Brandon. Brandon ain't gonna talk, though. He is tough, but what was the point of him doing that? Just let him get the two, he gonna score? Nah, he just let him get the two? Nah, he gonna get the two. But he gonna foul it. Exactly. Look what he gonna do. Just let him get the two. Look what he did. Look what he did. It's a straight up good contest. That's a good contest. That's a good contest. What the ref do? Call the Okay, but that's a good contest. But what did the ref do? Okay. You can't get mad at him, though. But Edwin, if you gonna foul, you need to foul him. He didn't foul him, though. He didn't try to foul him. The ref called him. He didn't try to foul him. Okay. Watch it, though. How many points he could have got if you just let him go? He gonna miss. Alright, we're gonna see. Watch, he gonna miss. Uh, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> of course he missed. Like, what a remote. <laughs> Jerry Jackson talk. Oh my god. Watch this. It's about mad Jerry gonna be straight. Now, next year. Yeah, yeah to that. Next to hit, it would do go. Watch this, watch this. Watch this. Yeah. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. They don't get another superstar zone. Don't look at me! Uh, Don't, look at me. Don't look at me! Don't look at me! Yeah, fit nice. Look, show me the shirt. Show me the shirt. Let me see your shirt. Show me the shirt. Show me the shirt. Hey, let me see the shirt. Hey, hey, turn the light on for me. I'm trying to see your shirt. The shirt hard though. The shirt, the shirt hard. hard. Wait a minute, man. And it's Nike too. Look, look, look. Look, look. Look at that. Dang. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah, 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 that's nice.
So when I hold it, Ooh. when I actually get it, you know, it's going, you know. You ready for the pitch? Where your ring is? Huh? Where your ring is? Oh, I ain't get my state, oh, my state cherry shit out of too. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Fuck that cherry. You know what I'm on. <clears throat> Put that down. The ring. Hey, this is real. It's real dog. Yes. I don't think it will be fake. You didn't see him hitting the dog. It's not even that serious. Now, when I get that Mr. Basketball this year, I just want you to know, like, this is what it look like. Derrick only got four. He's like that. Bro, that money got four Mr. Best Ball to four state championships. Yeah, he, 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 he was different. Derrick had a squad, though. Yeah, they did. They had all the folks from Weehawken. His senior year. They, they had all the folks from Weehawken. His senior year, he carried. Yeah, his senior year. Hey, it was him and Marcus Fitzgerald. No. Marcus, Marcus, Marcus and Cam Johnson. Cam Johnson. Who they want to go to. He played Weehawken Go. He go to Vanderbilt now. Uh, it's hot. Uh, good it's out hot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where you want to put your ring, Cam? Oh. Right here. Right here. Uh, I got two separate orders. I got Kennedy, then I got Nick. Hey, what's for the first one? For the first one, can I get uh, a number two spicy chicken sandwich meal with a large fry and a large sweet tea mix of lemonade with Polynesian sauce? First one, can you add a three piece? I'm sorry. Should you add a cookie? No, add a three piece shrimp. Yes, sir, that brings it up to 1337. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Bro. 13 at Chick fil A. 13 at Chick fil A, bro. Chick fil A is like the place you need to, it's like the best restaurant, bro. I'm not gonna count. Chick fil A is the place, it's a place when you're very hungry, bro. I think you're done with the game, you go to Chick fil A. It's, it's like 13, I'm spending 13 at Chick fil A. Memphis and all that Arkansas, that's the bridge, so. Mississippi River right here. This the hill. Come on, that's uh, when all this quarantine stuff started, I came here, did, ran some hills for my train and stuff like that. Some of my friends, I, just, I worked out some of my friends by myself, so. As you can tell, I'm tired right now from walking on this hill. I know you're tired from walking on this hill. It's a big hill. So, man, I'm tired. Downtown right here. About to play for the Grizzlies one day. I went to all day games. You know, it's lit over here. So. show you the Bass Pro, stuff like that. This the whole Bill Street right here. Yeah, this downtown, it's right by the FedEx Forum. It's a good place to hang out at, you know. Have like crawfish festival, stuff like that. Memphis Music Fest. I'm gonna tell you where they have that at. There's a lot of stuff we do downtown. I'm just, uh, I do this. I ride, I come downtown with my sister. My mom stay down here. So I drive a scooter. This right here with my sister. We just be chilling. The, the stage is yours. You ready to tell the world we're going to play college basketball next year? Big basketball news on the Hill. Number one point guard in the country, Kennedy Chandler. It's, it's been a big journey, you know. Uh, I just, 
It's been a long journey for me to come this far to have all the schools that I wanted to offer me, Duke, Kentucky, Memphis, Tennessee, North Carolina, and beyond other schools that offer me. Just a thing I always wanted to come true, and this came true. But I got to keep on. I got to keep on uh, one of my dreams to come true for me to play in, the, play in the NBA and for me to play college basketball and for me to provide for my for five of my family. That's all I want to do and help them out. That's, that's, I got keep my journey. Got to keep on going and going.